Hey up lads and lasses, Danfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. So today we're going to start on uh, going through the cruisers, uh, looking at which mods to get first and that kind of thing. Um, mostly due to the fact that the patch notes for the part 3 of uh, the new update with the strike craft and the flagships and stuff has been sort of delayed a bit. I believe it's up on the Chinese website at the moment so you can go over there to have a look at it. The translation is pretty terrible using Google Translate and stuff, so I've decided to uh, record that when it gets around to actually, you know, properly coming out. So, in the meantime, I'm going to start on the cruises, going to try and get all these recorded so they can upload over the rest of November, December and stuff, because I want a bit of a break in December. Um, so, yeah, without needlessly to say, really, we're going to go through all these cruises. I am missing... A couple of variants here, uh, so going to be a little bit annoying. I'm missing defensive Chimera, heavy cannon Jaeger, the uh, HT Callisto, I believe the AA Predator. Am I missing a Cass? I am. I'm missing both the artillery and the aircraft variants. Well, there you go then. Either way, we're starting off with the KCC PV 2.0. So, let's jump into that. So, here we are uh, with the KCC PV 2.0. This is one of the free-to-play ships, so you get it within that first box that you start with. Um, so, that's really nice. I believe they give you the integrator type and the aircraft type. Um, so, you know, you do get an aircraft at a cruiser level. It does only hold two, but we'll get into that when we get around to it. So the KCCPV, it's like pretty much main redeeming feature is the fact that it's got a very fast warp speed. It's got a decent cruising speed. I believe this gets up to 850 with the propulsion upgrades. So you can sort of run it in that sort of 850 fleet if you're like desperate for ships. Uh, maybe you've got, you know, load of the 850 style uh, ships but you're missing you know a bit of cp spare because you got like 350 cp or something like that that's where you can put the kcc pvs in they are okay damage uh they are a lower cp cost than most cruisers at 16 uh, most cruisers are hitting around 18 20 cp so it's a bit cheaper so you are sort of getting uh, kind of value for money there because you ain't getting the damage uh, but you are still relatively getting a bit of a cruiser tank um, but yeah it's it's usable uh, it's higher damage I find than uh, well at least the same da damage as the Cass uh, so if you are looking to run and you are completely free to play in your you know server 1 server 2 uh, you can stick this thing into the fleet like um, we tested some fleets recently uh, mean happy where we are you're only using the free to play ships and um, I literally just built like 12 casts and then as many of these KCC PVs as I could and just let them go and uh, yeah they did surprisingly well in that situation again they're not going to be sort of end game server 7 server 8 you're probably not going to be using these too often um, there is an argument for the railgun use uh, but we'll get around to that one as well so first off it is a back row ship so we can ignore the armor system for a bit so i'd recommend first off going into the integrated weapon system because this has the hexadeca fire missile and you have the siege torps in here as well uh personally i would completely be ignoring the strategy here and i would be picking up pretty much any of these hit rates even if it's against cruisers due to the fact that you know the are siege torps the missiles are probably do all right without it so you could argue that you don't need it um so just picking up the base hit rate instead would probably do all right here uh but i'd probably pick up both you have like a lot of slots what's this like seven seven slots of you know damage potential here and most of these are pretty terrible so you're gonna end up picking probably you know these six anyway so you're going to be picking up the hit rates then the cooldowns and then probably the missile and torp damage uh after that you have got the one slot free 
probably the system HP. That'll keep it alive a bit longer if you are facing enemies that are running system damage, especially against main weapon systems. Um, otherwise, you can pick up the strategy here. Albeit, I will say again, it's not particularly great, this strategy, so you can sort of ignore that. After that, you have the generic battery system. This thing is not going to hit fighters or anything like that, but it has got some bonuses to hitting frigates and destroyers. I would recommend picking up that first, the double cooldown, and then you pick up one of these damage mods as well. It's, you know, it's, it's an okay ship. It's got 420 on the uh, siege torps. You've got 250 on the damage per hit for the uh, missiles, and it fires quite a few missiles. It fires 16 uh, salvos, so it's it's you know it's reasonable it, you can use it after that you are probably looking at look going into your armor sister picking up both the hp increases i'd then recommend one of the energy increases and then a physical resistance to finish it off the reason for the energy resistance is because it is back row it can get hit by uavs such as the xeno uav and they do energy damage proportion system Going into last, cruising speed works pretty well here. And then you can up your warp speed as you need it. Again, the cruising speed does bring it up to around the 850 mark. So it's a pretty damn fast ship considering it's a cruiser. Your second option with this ship is going into siege damage. So you're using this to hit outposts and stuff like that. You'll be picking up the double siege damage, double cooldown and the double damage. And then you probably try and pick up the last hit rate there. It's not going to matter too much against structures. After that, going straight into the armor system, picking up the system HP, and then the double physical resistances. Structures do not have any energy damage, so to speak. So you can pick up, you can drop the energy damage in that instance, and your propulsion going full cruising speed and one of the warp speeds. And you can use it as a sort of hit and run style fleet where you're just going to fly in, blow up an amp or something of that nature and get the hell out so yeah it's it's usable it's even usable late game in that amp uh or outpost attack configuration and it, it does reasonably well in that situation we then move over to the pulse cannon version you can see here we have lost uh some of the uh well the generic system you still get the hexadeck uh, which is pretty much identical. You lose the um, siege torps, but you gain these fast firing pulse uh, weapon and apparently rapid energy compression drive. I have only just noticed that one. I wonder why that's got two systems within this one energy system, but it's not upgradable. Either way, it's a 300 damage per hit with uh, no duration, five second lock on time with a five second cooldown makes it pretty damn rapid attack. I would then highly recommend coming into here, picking up both the hit rates against frigates and destroyers. You can ignore the hit rate against cruisers and higher. I would then recommend the double cooldown here and the double damage, bringing you up to all six of your slots. You do lose a slot on this uh, version. Uh, I believe it's still, it goes to mid row as well. So you probably do want to pick up armor at some point as well. So probably double HP system before that, just in case. Uh, you get a bonus physical energy, uh, sorry, bonus energy res on this version as well. So picking up both of those over the armor is probably going to be uh, serve you better in most situations. Generic battery system is the same as before, I believe. Yeah, you want the frigate destroyers, double cooldown and damage and then you finish it off with the propulsion system again double cruising speed brings it close to the 850 if not on the 850 and then you have the warp speed as well i have not particularly used this ship at all by the time that i got the pulse variant i already had things like tauruses and stuff like that that fill my energy damage rolls so it's uh, unfortunately gathered some dust um but from some data that i have collected from it it seems reasonable if you are missing other damaging ships and you need you have the cp spur this can fill that slot the railgun type is the other one that i quite like for using for siege uh haven't used it recently mostly because i run the io siege now instead but i did use to run this quite a bit back in the day this is one of the first blueprints i picked up was the railgun type of this and yeah 
it does pretty well at going in, blowing up amps at super speed, because again, we're at the 8650, uh, the 650 cruise speed. We can pick up a double cruising speed and a warp, bringing it pretty damn fast, especially for a cruiser. You then can go into the bow mounted battery system here, and you can pick up the double siege damage, double cooldown, and double damage for quite a lot of damage potential. You even have one slot spur here. Uh, where you probably take uh, probably the hit rate again. That is a really different icon to literally every other icon, by the way. Something I've only just noticed. Most of the hit rates look like this, like a radar system with an aircraft in it. Never seen one with two targeting reticles in it. Um, so that's how I would set up the railgun. I generally wouldn't use it for anything else, and that's mostly due to the fact that the railgun, yes, it's got fantastic damage per hit, but at the end of the day, it is a railgun, and they do struggle hitting practically literally everything. And you don't have much in the way to buff up its hit rate, bar these two hit rate buffs here. Yes, you could potentially run this with something like Ceres Tactical or something of that nature to buff it up, but at the same time, is that really worth it? You drop the, yeah, you probably ignore the generic on this style and then probably go straight into the propulsion, increasing the cruising speed and stuff. And yeah, leave it at that. Armor systems, ship HP, physical resistances would be good here. Ignore the energy resistance. This thing's all about the siege damage. It's got decent siege potential. I wouldn't run it in a fleet over the integrated for anti-ship at any point, mostly due to the fact that the weapon types a bit lackluster at pretty much hitting anything. Now, the aircraft type. This is your go-to ship if you have bombers but don't have a carrier and you need the large hangar slots. This is the only ship in the game that isn't a carrier that has the capacity to uh, fill large fighter role. So this is literally the only way you're going to get it in. That being said, you are on the back row with this ship, so you can ignore the armor system going straight into the aircraft system. And the strategy here deploys aircraft UV, so attack these targets as a priority and reduce attack duration by 45%. is kind of mitigated because you generally don't want to carry fighters on this thing, not two of anyway, it's not CP efficient whatsoever. So you're better going, say, prioritized targets would probably be ignored because you're going to put bombers, Vetus Bs and that kind of thing in here. So generally ignore this strategy. If you are sort of trying to run this as say a light carry running sort of like medium aircraft and light aircraft, so spores, mistures, that kind of thing, you can run the strategy here. It will help them out a little bit. Um, so yeah. It's, it's a tough catch-22. It's not particularly great at doing that role. There are better ships well within there. And obviously, you're trying to use this more of as a carrier role uh, with the bombers. It, it kind of depends, I guess. But you would take the hit trait first off here and the RTB. They are literally the two most important things that you've got in here to actually increase the damage potential of the Vetus Bs. Uh, hit rates do work on the Vetus Bs. I have tested it. Uh, you have four slots remaining, so you can take up triple damage here, which is actually quite nice. And I'd probably... Siege damage, yeah, it's not going to help much, is it? Probably taking up the system HP here if you're running the Vetus Bs. If you are not running the Vetus Bs, this is where you'd probably take the prioritized target. And that's due to the fact that if you're running medium or fighters, basically, not bombers. That's what I'd probably do with that there. Propulsion system, generic battery system. You do have the Hexadeck on here still, don't you? Yes. So uh, the Hexadeck... Oh, is it switch targets to... No, it switches to small ships. I was about to say, it's like fighters, corvettes. Uh, pick up the hit rate first. Pick up the double cooldown, and then I think you've got room for one of the damage mods. Uh, your generic battery system, same as pretty much all everything before. Frigate destroyer, double cooldown, and the cannon damage. And then probably into propulsion, picking up your typical uh, cruising speed, warp speed, or instead, if you'd rather, you can go into the armor system here again, picking up double HP, 
Probably energy resistance here again. Physical might also be worth it. Again, it's back row, so it depends what the enemy's running a little bit on that one. I'd probably recommend... You're sat at 50 armor anyway. I'd probably recommend uh, the extra energy resistances just due to the fact that you're kind of low on energy resistances anyway, only 10%. At least picking this up is going to give you another 10%, bringing you to 20% energy resistances. Um, as compared to, I think, adding like 20 armor maybe. 6, 30 armor, 80. So it bring you to 80 armor, which isn't too bad. So that is the KCCPV 2.0. And the start of going through the cruises, we'll next be looking at the Connemara Chaos, and yeah. Until then, have a good one guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.